Hello wonderful people, welcome back to my channel. I am Elena and I'm very excited about this video because if you had a chance to look at the last video which I talked about my wine journey, you will understand what this video is about. So as promised, I told you all I will get into the knowledge but because wine has such an extensive uh, knowledge, I will take my time and do the basics. So I'll let you all know some basic information and then another video I'll get deeper and so on and so on. I can't tell you all everything in one video and of course wine education sometimes tend to be a little boring but I'm going to try my best to make it as exciting as I can. I hope my head wrap is not throwing you all off a bit. I'm just feeling a bit Afrocentric today. So I just wanted to spruce it up a bit and this is my look for today's video. Okay, so before I get into that, I want to share with persons who may be looking at this channel for the first time what my channel is about. My channel is about helping persons to become the best version of themselves by touching on areas such as uh, etiquette skills. So I'd be showing persons how to set their table for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and of course, jazz it up with some decorating styles for your table, as well as wine education, which we'll be touching on today, as well as home decor and some interior designing. And of course, one of my favorites, fashion. So if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and it sounds interesting please do not hesitate to subscribe share like and do all that good stuff give it a thumbs up and here we go so are you all ready for Elena's class that is what it's going to be like today but as i said i'm going to try not to make it too boring but the reason why i really want to get into letting you all know more about wines is because that is the only way I believe you'll get a greater appreciation for wines and of course it will help build your confidence when you go to dine or when you're entertaining entertaining at home and you're having wines you would know that it's not just an ordinary drink like juice or sorrel or beer so here we go so some of the things we'll be discussing today is what is wine now, I, I wrote down uh, some things because I don't want to forget and there's a lot of information. So I wrote down, so we we'll discuss what is wine, uh, factors that influence the quality of wine, the steps of wine making. We are also going to talk about the different classifications of wine. And then what I will do is I am going to pronounce or sound off five different types of white wines and five different types of red wines. So are you ready? Are you excited? Okay, here we go. So the first thing is, what is wine? Wine is the fermentation of grape, or grape juice and that process is called vinification so when the wine is harvested it is going through that first process of fermentation so the different factors that may influence wine in terms of the quality of the wine would be things like climate soil, uh, lock of the year, the winery, the fermentation process, as well as, let me see, the cultivation of the wine, the aging and the maturing of the wine, shipping and transportation, and of course, uh, storage of the wine temperature. So those are the different factors that may influence the quality of the wine. So let's talk about the five different steps in making wines. 
So I just talked about the fermentation process, but that is not actually the first step. The first step is the harvesting. Now, we all know about the harvest festivals in those European countries that you would see those women with their skirts in a barrel and they're barefooted and they're mashing the grapes. That would have been a harvest festival. That, that is what they used to call it, a harvest festival. But I don't think people want their feet in the grape squashing that and that is the same fruit that you're going to be having a drink with. Although I think they still do it as a custom in some European countries, they have found more modern ways, I guess, of crushing this grapes. So after we have harvested the grape, the second thing that we're going to do is crush or press the grapes. Now this is where it becomes interesting because white wine can be made with red grapes, but red wine cannot be made with white grapes. So what they actually do is, when they have crushed the grapes, which the first juice that you get is called must. So what they do is, they leave the skin in the juice and that is how you get that nice red color. It depends on how long they keep the skin in the, in the must, in the juice, and when it, the skin starts to bleed, that is how they get that lovely color. And it depends on how long they keep it during the fermentation process. Now, during that fermentation process, what happens is they leave it as long as it can. So what happens is that the sugar eventually con converts to alcohol. Now, this is how dry wines are formed. If you want a more sweet wine, you don't leave the fermentation process as long. So what you get is the tannin from the... the skin of the grape and that is the different taste of course you will get with the wine so of course the longer you stay in the fermentation process the longer uh or the more red the wine can be the taste is even stronger and the strength of course of the wine is more pronounced so after we have finished that fermentation process but before I, I move into the third step what I want to say in terms of the crushing and the pressing not all winemakers would want to crush and press the grapes what some will do is actually leave the grape on uh, crushed and pressed and they would leave the grape in the uh, container or whatever they are using full as is uncrushed and they leave the grape to burst naturally so that is also another way in terms of the fermentation process so it's not all the time you may choose to crush or press the grape of course when that fermentation process is over what they will do is the clutter of grapes that did not burst they will then crush and press and add that must to the rest of the uh, juice or must from that fermentation. So we have the harvesting, we have the crushing and pressing, we have the fermentation, which I already explained what fermentation is. After that, what we do is the clarification of the wine now this is where a lot of natural winemakers or local winemakers who would make local wines like what I discussed in terms of hibiscus rice mango everything under the, the Sun almost you can make wines with but 
really and truly internationally they only still consider grapes as real wine but what i want to touch on like i said uh local persons people in the tropics love homemade wines and have you ever gotten a wine from someone who it tastes good but the wine is very very cloudy so what we do is we put our let's say we're making sorrel wine we put it in the bucket we leave it there to ferment and then what we do is we strain it <laughs> we either use a clot or a strainer and after that what we do is we sweeten it and that's it so the wine is always cloudy there is always these sediments what we would say as dregs as well at the bottom of the wine but the wine tastes really good but in making wine professionally they go a, 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 a bit further in terms of making the wine and that is wine clarification so what they will do is they will after the wine has been done with that fermentation and by the way fermentation can be from 10 days to a month or even more it depends on how sweet you like the wine so if you want the wine very sweet you won't leave it to ferment as long as if you aim in for a dry wine or a full body wine so that is entirely up to you and you can still use the same method if you're using local fruits or vegetables or whatever it is to make your wine now i find that a lot of local winemakers have really improved throughout the years because you're actually seeing local wines that have that clarity as if it's uh wine from grapes so we we're getting there but we still have a long way to go in terms of getting the wine to a certain standard so after that fermentation process as i said is over what you'll do is you're going to transfer the wine to another barrel or another container as it is it depends on the winery now there is a name for that but right now to be quite honest it's not coming to me but they will transfer that from one bucket to the next with the hope of actually uh, leaving the sediments behind after that what they will do is they will add substances in the wine to start getting that clarification so there are substances they will add to make sure that the other dregs or sediments remain at the bottom and they will also add substances in it i know there is one called super clay that a lot of local wine users use um, i guess that would be used on a larger scale in a winery but one of it is called i know it's called super clay so you'll put that into the wine and you'll get that nice clarification that nice clarity it's look really clear and nice and you don't get that cloudy looking heavy looking wine as you would with if you're just making local wine in in your pigtail bucket and just transfer and you sweeten and that's it so you want that wine nice and clear and of course the last stage would be the aging and maturing or the racking so after you have done all of that you would then age your wine and or but and bottle the wine of course one there are a lot of myths in terms of uh, the strength of wine now wine percentage could be from nine percent to fifteen percent it's not going to be higher than that anything higher than that it, it it's going into different liqueurs and so on right so that is the simplest way i try to at least give you all a basic knowledge in terms of the five steps that is basically used in making wines i hope i was clear enough and i hope you all understand how um the wine process is, is made so there are different classifications of wine and i'm quite sure you all know this already but for reminders and for probably persons who don't know at all, I'll share this with you. So 
there is the still wine or table wine. This is either red wine or white wine. And then you'll also have rosy wine. You have sparkling wine and champagne. So those are the different classifications of wine. And of course, in my next wine video, I will tell you what is the difference between sparkling wine and champagne. It's not the same. But what I will tell you is that champagne can only come from, come from France. So any other country, it is considered a sparkling wine. France has only been able to maintain that rights to call their champagne a champagne. So let's move on because I'm really trying not to bore you all with extensive detail. But like I said, knowledge is power and you all can use this knowledge to become better in terms of wine knowledge. Okay, so now we're going into wine pronunciation. What I'm going to do is I am going to give you all five different white wine names and five different red wines. So what the, the names that I'm actually calling is the name of the grape. It's not actually the name of the wine. So are you ready? So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to say the name slowly and then I'm going to sound it out. And of course, hopefully I will have the word so you would actually see how to sound it out. Okay, ready? Okay, so the first one is Simeon. Simeon. The second one is Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. The other one is Chardonnay. Chardonnay. The other one is Riesling. Riesling. And the last one we'll talk about is Palomino. Palomino. And those are the five white grape variety. Five red grape variety would be Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon. Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Gamay. Gamay. Sangiovese. Sangiovese. And the last one is Grenache. Grenache. So, those are five red grape variety. There's something that I forgot to mention early on in terms of the the wines vineyard is called Vitis vinifera. So the different vine uh, variety is called Vitis or Vitis vinifera. So hope you all enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of information, but just bear with me. I promise you that this information will come in very handy. So look out for the next video where we dive even deeper into wine knowledge. No, 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 no wine tasting just yet. We will get to that point. And of course, I'll let you all know which wines we'll be using. And that's a fun part. So see you next video. And please don't forget to subscribe and i would appreciate your comments at the bottom of the the video and look forward to the next video bye